anything personal, I'll, I'll take it out. So it won't be shared at all. Um, and then I'm gonna share the link to my notes. You cannot minimize when you're recording. Oh, okay, let me just make this bigger real quick. Share, copy link, okay. Okay, so I am, good morning. I am adding the notes in the chat just in case anybody needs them. Um, and let's just pray in. Okay. Oh, Lord, we thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Father, we thank you, Lord. We bless your name, God. We exalt you, God. We put you back on the throne where you belong, God. Lord, I'm so full this morning. I'm so grateful for these ladies that you've, that you've like literally, you put us all together, God, for just, for your glory, God. I, I'm grateful to be able to be used by you. I'm grateful that they are able to be used by you, Lord Father God. I thank you, God, that you remove all shame, that you remove all areas where we've been having distraction, where we feel like we haven't been able to pour into you and push into you the way that, you know, we may desire or the way we once did. I ask that you come sit with us because we love you, God. We wake up in this morning, Lord, like not out of routine, literally, Lord, because we want a word from you, because we need to dwell with you. We need strength this morning, Lord Father God. We ask for a double portion of your strength this morning, God. We ask for a double portion of your faith this morning, God. We ask for a double portion of your peace this morning, God, that you wrap each and every one up each and every one of us up in your peace in a way that we have never experienced God where we like man I don't even know like how we're making it or how things are going like I just ask that you just show up in such a powerful way God remind us who you are father we're your daughters who sit at your feet who dwell with you and who love you and we just we just want to just truly decrease let each of us decrease lord as you sit with us and commune with us god and that you truly increase and you completely take over this bible study god and that the words that are released that everything that needs to come out needs to be all you lord and none of us that we get no glory and that you get all the glory in jesus christ mighty name we come to you amen amen um Okay, so we're in 131 as the first chapter. I did put the notes in there. I know, um, like, pages are something that if you put the notes into, so people can't get it. So I'll just do it one more time, real quick. Um, okay, 131, Psalms 131, um, the childlike spirit. So the Psalms 131 summary the Psalm is David's profession of humility and humbly made. Um, with thankfulness to God for his grace and not in vain glory. Um, and then when we go into the scripture, um, I had a few that stood out to me. I'll share mine and then you guys can like share if you all have anything, you know, different that I didn't um, choose here or if you just have anything to piggyback. Um, so I started with the first one, which is my heart is not proud, Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. And I went into two and it said, but I have calmed and quieted myself. I'm like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child, I am content. And it was complex, but good to me. Um, I love really the second verse when it says I've calmed and quieted myself. And I think we can all relate to those moments. Um, and if you had a baby, then you can really relate to those moments, like when you like are nursing a lot and then they finally like are able to soothe themselves and just like have peace, like without necessarily being attached to you. Like they're able to kind of like self-soothe and like trust in the fact that like they're okay, they're gonna be provided for, their needs are met. Um, I think it's like a beautiful state where you're just not in panic anymore. I feel like I've learned to be in that place of God when I'm starting to panic. And I'm like, you know what, I'm okay because I can feed myself with the word of God. And that's where I find my contentment. Um, that's kind of like how I received it. Did you guys like receive it any differently or um, have anything else that might've stood out to you guys? That was so good. Um, one thing, somebody told me this about this scripture a long time ago, so I can't say it's my revelation, but um, they likened the 
passage about like a weaned child, how they're getting closer to being ready for meat. Like, right. So the wean, the, the, the baby <laughs> is like still drinking milk. Right. And the Bible likens milk to like what immature believers believe, you know, the, I mean, you know, the word that the, the immature believer is able to receive, but we're supposed to graduate from milk to meat. And so like this wean child is no longer like frantic forward from God, like, you know what I mean? But they're like, they trust in the Lord and then they're getting ready for the deeper things of God, which is what the meat is likened to. So um, I just thought that that was interesting. Man, that's so good. What a good revelation. Cause you always, you always do hear that. Like, you know, as you wean off milk and you start to get mature in Christ, you do need the meat. I didn't, I would have never thought of that like that. That was a really good revelation. I love that. Um, anybody else have anything that I, that I, cause I only have one and two. Um, I know it was really short, but if you guys have any other scriptures, you know, feel free. Have, it's, hey, it's Sakina. Good morning, everyone. Um, John, I get to see you on here. Um, I was going to say, I, I read the passion translation and it said, um, uh, I don't consider myself, uh, I'm sorry for one, I don't consider myself better than others. I'm content to not pursue matters that are over my head such as complex mysteries and wonders that I'm not yet ready to understand. I am humbled and quieted in your presence like a contented child who rests on its mother's lap. I'm your resting child in my soul and content. Um, and, and resting child in my soul is content in you. Um, for me, the, the main part was uh, I'm not yet ready to understand um, because literally that's everything. <laughs> Um, and so one of the prayers that I always have is to have a spirit of contentment, um, to be content in the things that he applies for me. Um, so that just resonated with me that like, I'm not supposed to strive so much to try to understand or make sense of it. I'm just really supposed to strive to be more content. Um, so yeah, that was my part. No, I don't pray that much for just to be content. Like, I think that's something I could start doing more of. Um, cause that can be like a different level of gratitude and appreciation for where you are and wherever God has called you to be. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that you said that because that's just a, I don't know, that's just something I, I didn't really think and something to pray as much, but that's something I'm going to start to do. Um, no, that's okay. Um, Raquel, did you want to say anything or did it just go out? I didn't even notice it. Um, good morning, ladies. Hey, good morning. You know, I was listening to you all, and um, one of the reasons why I do pray is some, uh, well, I love to pray, but one of my things I pray, I love to pray because I, I need the contentment. You know, I, I, I have to um, set myself up so that I can have a full understanding in what it is I need to do at all times. I have to constantly remind myself because um, it was, you know, I've already knew that I had a, um, a problem with organizing things, you know, because I spread myself so thin like jam, you know, I'm always spreading myself and I'm learning that I can't be in so many different places and I can't be everything that I want to be for people. I have to, you know, let, you know, let people lean on God. And I, I, I've learned myself that I have to lean on God. So I do pray for contentment because I really need that in my life. I need to be content with the things that's going on around me. I need to be content. I need to know that what I'm seeing and the things that I'm experiencing is not, it's, it's real. You understand me? I need to know that. So I, it contents me. It gives me content and to know that God is dwelling with me and that he's speaking back to me and that I'm seeking him. So that's, that's, that's one of the things that I do and um, pray about because I need it. You know, I'm learning that I have to prioritize myself and stuff like that. So a lot of this stuff is I'm new in the Valley um, of, of prioritizing and, just getting things in order for me because I've, I've been out of the, not the wheel, but I've been doing so much, trying to do so much on my own. So I'm coming in the will of God and letting him guide me is important to me right now. Amen. Amen. Uh, that's a whole word. It is received. And um, like you said, it's definitely necessary. And I'm, I'm really glad that Tina said that because that's just something we can all just, you know, focus on and apply to our lives with being content. Cause it's easy when things get a little crazy, like, Oh, what, like, get me out of here versus Lord, teach me how to sit in it. You know, it's two different things. Um, 
Okay, if, if, um, if nobody else had anything from Psalms 131, we can go into 132, but I, I don't, I'm not rushing. So if anybody has anything else, feel free. Okay. And if not, okay, we could go on to Psalms 132. Um, Psalms 132 is unique in the fact that it quotes word for word, both sides of the pact between David and God. His message is, God, David kept his promise of finding you a resting place. Please uphold your promise and sustain Zion and the Davidic or Davidic, or I don't know how to say it, dynasty. Um, and then I had a few things that stood out from chapter 132, starting with verse one. Um, I, I took one through five and I grouped them because it's, it is a smaller passage. And they, to me, it was just a really, um, some good meat in it. And it said, Lord, remember David and all his self-denial. Oh, that was, that was what I thought was so good first, because sometimes you, you like, I think we can kind of like discredit like how beautiful that self-denial can really be. Like whether we're fasting or whether we're just getting our lives back on track for God saying I'm ready to make a change, um, that God really honors that sacrifice. Um, so I thought that that was like just a good first starting point and um, how God honored his sacrifices. And then verse two, he swore an oath to the Lord. He made a vow to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not enter my house or go to my bed. I will allow no sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids till I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the mighty one. Like he was committed to this thing. I feel like there's so many times where I've been shaky, like even now where like I'm not fully committed to my sacrifices. But then there was times where I was like ready to stop having sex um, or ready to stop being like a fool um, in the streets, fighting, carrying on, anything that looked like no longer went with me, where I literally made a decision like, I'm not going back, Lord. Like, I feel like when you make those kind of sacrifices, God honors you in a way where my life changed so drastically. Um, so I don't know, I just thought this was a really honorable first paragraph um, to start with. And that's why I chose that. Um, and then I'll go into my next little chunk and then my last. Um, then I went to verse 11 through 13, and it said, the Lord swore an oath to David, a sure oath. He would not revoke one of your own descendants. I will, I'm sorry, he would not revoke his oath. One of your own descendants, I will place on your throne. If your sons keep my covenant and the statutes, I teach them, then their sons will sit on your throne forever and ever. For the Lord has chosen Zion and he has desired it for his dwelling saying. Um, and, and it brought me back to just like, just, just being in that place and that the heart posture to sacrifice and to go hard for God and how he really blessed everything. I mean, even his bloodline was blessed, like everything was blessed just off his covenant um, with David and the fact that he held his end of the bargain and God honored it. Um, I love that. And then the last two that I had was here, I will make a horn grow for David and set, that was 17, I'm sorry. Here, I will make a horn grow for David and set up a lamp for my anointed one. I love that he called him his anointed one because I feel like we are his anointed ones. And it's just such love and just being an anointed one to be even be able to be used by God, connected to God in the image of God. Like, like that's such a beautiful I don't know. It's just, it's just beautiful to me. Um, and that's how I look at us. And for verse 18, it said, I will clothe his enemies with shame, but his head will be adorned with a radiant crown. And then I love the fact how God like had his back, like not only like, am I going to anoint you? Am I going to bless your bloodline? Am I going to bless the environment, everything connected to you, but anybody who comes up against you, you don't even have to fight because I'm going to bring them shame. And then I'm going to sit you here and I'm going to honor you in front of all of them what kind of covenant and promise and glory is this? Like, ah, oh, 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 I just love the whole thing. Um, okay, we we'll come back. And so yeah, that was all I had. And whatever y'all had, come on, because this was a good chapter to me. If y'all got anything. Y'all got nothing? Um, I think you said it all. I oh. think <laughs> <laughs> no, that was really good. I think that um, 
you know, what's so like, like the way that it starts off about like, Lord, remember David and all of his afflictions. Like that's what it says in the, the New King James, like how he swore to the Lord and vowed to the Lord that he wasn't going to rest until like, you know, the Lord had a rest in place. And so there's just so much reward you know, in your sacrifice, in your obedience, in your love for God, like when you make a decision to make sure that he, you are his resting place, like I will be a place where you can live, like Holy Spirit, you can dwell in me, you can use me, you can speak through me, like when you give yourself over to God like that, then the, the rest of the chapter just shows like all of the stuff you get in the return, provision and protection and just like, you know, to have God on your team like that is just such a beautiful thing. And I really feel like I'm living in that right now. Um, you know, like I'm living in that promise because um, I've had some afflictions, right? But God is so faithful. You know, he's just so like every day is almost overwhelming to the point where he just shows me like, I am with you. And he constantly whispers that to me. Like when I have a moment of like, anxiety like I don't know I can do this he just whispers and I hear him so clearly I am with you and he is and it's such a beautiful thing so yeah this is a great chapter wow over you right now like am I, I'm not tripping I know I'm not tripping like do y'all see the peace of God that's literally like on her right now I'm just like Lord how is this this is his glory is so faithful the serenity is definitely showing up it's like yeah, I was gonna say she's definitely glowing, yeah. considering all that you're going through. And I'm not trying mm. to say because you got the background, but literally, like considering all that you're going through, like you can still see like the glow like through you. So I can't imagine where you're at right now. Um, but I mean, literally, it's good to see you. Like just to see the peace and the glory and everything is just like it's a, it's really amazing, Jana. Like it's really amazing. So God bless you. Yeah, it's confirmation to see that God is dwelling with you and that he has your back. It's, it's, it, it gives, it, you can see the peace on you. So that was one of my prayers for you this morning was for God to give you peace, you and your family. And I'm just glad to see that almighty God has showed up and done what he said he would do for us. So I just want to continue to pray for you. Thank you. I feel, I, I feel the prayers of the saints. I do. You know, so like I, I, I can feel it like under because it's not me and my own strength. If it were just John, I'd be like a wreck right now. But I literally feel the, um, the fruit of your prayer. So thank you all really. And one more thing, guys, you know, my grandma used to tell me, John, when we would go through our times like this, she used to say, you're here. Ain't no turning back. You know, you, you take in what you could take in. You have your moments, and by all means, by the blood of God, you continue to strive. That's it. And when you need to stop again, you stop. You pull over, and you regroup, and you pull, you get back in, and you drive again. You know, you drive harder, you drive faster, and you continue. She said, because when you try and run, there's where you run into. It's a circle. You're in there. You're here. So I, I just want to, I don't, I, I wanted to give you some type of just, like, it used to give me peace to know when well, my grandma would give me all these different analogies you know when I was young I didn't understand but as I get older this is something that I'm drawn to I can hear it like a teacher taught me something when I was small I just go right back into that zone um and I just wanted to give you that because a lot of times when, when we're going through we try to run from it. you can't run from it you 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 have to face it and you have to take it for all it is worth it, keep going. And, and at the end of the day, you remember the person that you love. You remember what they was to you, who they were to you. And you remember the good things. And you remember everything they taught you. The love that comes out of that, that I get, because I've always, we've, I've dealt with a lot of this as a young girl being up under my grandmother. So at this age now, if someone's going through something, it's just seems like, I'm, I'm always willing to just be there to listen. I'm always willing to be there if you want to talk. You know, I love to talk. I'm like a train going 90 miles an hour. If you want to get on, get on, we can talk. You know, I can listen too. I don't mind listening. So I just wanted to send that to you too, to let you know that, you know, God is good and you know that. And all of us on here today, we're here for you. And, and this is a wonderful thing too, this girl gang. I love each and every one of you all because listening to you all gives me, it gives me peace. Man, thank you, Paris. Thank you, Paris. Okay. Look, better um, add my two cents. Better add my two cents. Add your two cents on. Look, so what, what I got to go back to the verse first. So it says, um, for the Lord has chosen Zion. 
he has desired him for his habitation. So um, I had decided, like, if I have a boy, that his name would be Zion. And oh. so that, yeah, so that popped off the screen and did. So I'm reading. And then it get to talking about a girl. And then about the last verse said, it says, his enemies will be clothed in shame, but upon him shall his crown flourish. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay, so that, that really resonated with me. But uh, John, I just wanted to say just, just you're in the, um, you're being purified right now. Uh-huh. And um, so even when Pierce was talking, that's what I heard. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I, when I tell you, you look so graceful right now, I'm like, uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> because, because if I would have seen you in the wreck, I know I would have just, you know, crumbled. Because I look at you as a strong person. But like you said, you know, it, we, we got to, you know, you know, in your heart that we praying for you because because I, I just feel like when one of us hurt, we know it like the other ones know it. And so, like, when you know, we, we lifting you up in prayer. And I just and I just thank God that he keeps just choosing you. You know, he just keep choosing you to um, not only like what, what you're going to put in the earth is just it's just so amazing. But you got to be purified first, right? And that don't always feel good. So I thank you for joining today. You know, and I thank you for, you know, just knowing that God is faithful. Amen. Thank the you. One thing, can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. One thing I said, Chana, I did pray that you guys had peace. But my thing was, I pray that um, this does not become like your shackle or your setback or anything that continue. I know you mentioned like procrastination with your book. I pray that this won't be something that continues to hold you back. And I pray that this will actually be something that propels you to move forward. And I pray that, um, I hope that you use this as the fire to continue to push forward. Like that was my main Wait, Paige, something happened. Paige, can you hear me? Hold on. When, yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Talking. Yeah, now I can. Okay, yeah, I just, that was my main prayer. Like, it just kept coming. Like, please don't let this be her shackle. Please don't let this be the thing that can continue to hold her back. Let it be the thing that actually pushes her forward. So, that was my thing. Ooh. Oh, my God. Wow, that's amazing because I can't. I got to be honest. We, I'm not, we not even going to let this hold you back, right? Absolutely mm-hmm. not. Like we on your tail. No, I just heard God say catapult. No, but I just heard God say He's going to catapult her. Like I literally, uh, look, you better hear it. In my head, He's going to catapult her. It's, yes, you know, gang. You, he's, you're going to gang so much. It's, I've always felt like when you lose someone, like when I lost my father, oh, I gosh. gang from. I began so much from God. You know. Yeah. Okay, so I wasn't gonna say nothing. I was gonna wait till the end. I will say, and since Jana convicted me about in her prayer, the Lord said to stop saying that something is telling me. Um, when uh, Paris was speaking about peace, like even just the way that you're managing, there's so much grace and gracefulness. So not just that you are gracious and how you're managing it, but it's all it's it's almost regal. I shouldn't say almost. It, it's an example of, of like really being regal. Like you have such gracefulness in in how you carry yourself and how you receive and and how you process. And as she was talking, I said I'm gonna wait to the end to say it. But what I what I hear is that you know these are chapters in your books to be written. So these, the things that you're experiencing are lessons and chapters to be, to be wrote about, to a, exemplify that grace and that gracefulness for others. Um, and I know that you're taking notes, but these are literally like the things you endure are your chapters. Yes. So thank, thank you. I'm, I'm gonna tell y'all why that's so, <laughs> all of this is so good. Thank you all, I really do appreciate it. I mean, so I watched, um, this young lady from our church, she like lost her baby. She had a baby and the baby had some um, issues like, you know, like developmental issues, which like you can't imagine after being pregnant for nine months and you have a baby and the baby's got developmental issues and then the baby died like a year later, right? But she showed so much grace under, you know, just in that situation. And so as my father was transitioning and I knew in my spirit that, you know, he didn't have much more time. The Lord was speaking to me about how 
this was an opportunity. He, he kept bringing her back to my mind. Like it was an opportunity to show his faithfulness. It was an opportunity to show grace, even, you know, in affliction, even in like when you're in a lot of pain. And so the fact that you guys see it, it's like amazing to me because it's all him, you know, because I was just like, yeah, I can't do that. I want my daddy. You know what I'm saying? Like, but, you know, when, as it happens, it's like, you know, he's just, he's, he's just enough. That's all I can say. God is enough. Like whatever you go through, no matter how, you know, in your mind, you know, and in your flesh and your soul that you think like, I cannot handle this. He really is enough. And so I really thank you guys for all your words of encouragement. Truly. It means a lot. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Do you realize how you just confirmed us? Because I am always so nervous to speak up. And so for you to honestly just say that, I'm like, okay, God. <laughs> so girl, I'm, I'm telling you like everything you need to get, your truck, your books, like just stop talking about it and just be about it, honestly, real talk. I'll have a testimony about that truck in a minute, but you know, we don't talk about that. First of all, about that truck so much, but I, I don't even know why. I was like, why do I keep thinking about that? I don't know. You know what's crazy is when I logged on to the group meet, I was gonna ask about it, and then I saw, and I was like, this is not the time to ask. So I'm I'm grateful that, right. um, yeah, you have a testimony. So praise God for that. Amen. Um, okay, yeah. So okay, so Psalms 133. I didn't have as much so you guys let me know if you guys have anything um so for psalms 133 the theme is it begins by praising like brotherly coexistence and then it gives three supporting metaphors um i had verse one and it said how good and pleasant how good and pleasant it is when god's people live together in unity and that seems simple but it's actually huge just to be able to to dwell with people in unity um, and it really made me think of you guys. It made me think of like my relationships, you know, just even at home, like with my kids, with my husband, like how important it is and how pleasant and good it is when we're all like on one accord and it's like not no mess. You know what I mean? It's literally like, you know, we're, we all have the same vision, you know what I mean? even though we're all, you know, have, you know, different things going on. But I just thought that it stood out, it stood out. And it's a reminder, like for me too, to not let strife or anything that doesn't look like God come into like, whether it be through girl gang or whether it be through my home, like it is good and it's pleasant when we can live together in unity. Like we have to stay together in unity. And um, one thing, like even I'll remind my husband, like we haven't had that much like devotion time together. We've been kind of busy, like, you know, unity to me don't look like us just kicking it or hanging out like unity to me means like let's stop like let's reverence the father like let's pray let's make sure we have our church time together um you know like because that's how we stay good and pleasant and in unity so it just made me kind of have like a house check girl gang check like unity is everything um so that stood out to me did you guys have anything from 133 Um, exactly that. I actually highlighted that and put it in green um, because, um, well, and for the for the Passion Translation, it says how truly wonderful and delightful it, it, it is to see brothers and sisters living together in sweet unity. Mm. And just giving a quick reason as to why, um, just yesterday, my boys, they're five, about five years apart, and they were arguing. It took them an hour and a half to put groceries away. They were arguing, and I was on the phone with my stepmother, like, I want to intervene. Um, and my stepmother is one of four children. And I was like, I want to intervene. But every time I intervene, I feel like it escalates because I, I have no, it's not my ministry to have the patience in these sibling rivalries. I was the only child growing up for the most part with my mom. And then um, I have a younger brother, but he's, he's special needs. So I've just always had grace for him. So it's just not in my ministry to manage sibling rivalries. And um, she was like, she, remind, she told me that when her, when her siblings would get into it, that her mother would have them uh, kiss and make up. And they hated to do it. And as a result of having to every time kiss and make up that they learned to stop fighting. And so, um, so I did just that with my boys yesterday. And um, I mean, within like an hour or two, every time I was like, oh, looks like we got to kiss and make up. They were, you know, they were figuring it out. Like, no, we're not arguing. We're this, we're that or whatever. And so when I saw that, I was like, oh, dear God, please, you know, to see brothers <laughs> living together in sweet unity and you know being gracious and kind-hearted to each other um, it's just like absolutely everything so praying that intentionally over my children 
Um, but even, you know, and I saw it mainly for my kids, but even spanning out beyond that to see like just the unity and, and us as, as a unit, as a family, um, in my fellowship with other and so with others and so forth. But for me, it resonated primarily because of, uh, the brothers fighting. So, yeah. I love that. I love that. And, my kids do that. <laughs> and you know, one thing that y'all, I'm silly, but as you all speak and I'm over here tapping my feet, you and I T Y. You and I T Y. I mean, that's where I go sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Charge my, my head. No, that's okay. That's just your joy. It ain't nothing but your joy over there to get your foot tapping and dancing. That's joy. We need a little joy. Um, Anybody else have anything for 133? If not, we can go on to 134. Okay. Okay, so 134. Um, Psalms 134 is a blessing which goes two ways. It begins with a call upon the worshipers to bless God. And it ends with a blessing for the worshipers themselves. Love that. Um, Psalms 134 scripture uh, that stood out. Um, I kind of grouped mine. I just did one through three and it said, praise the Lord, all you servants of the Lord who minister by night in the house of the Lord, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion. He who is the maker of heaven and earth. And really also it, what stood out to me was because it kept saying like, praise the Lord, like worship the Lord, praise the Lord. I know like when God says stuff, you know, multiple times he really wants us to get it and just to like live our lives like that. Um, yeah, we minister, you know, um, we are out here like, you know, learning to walk in our anointing and, um, but it just kept going back to praise and, um, just, just, just starting to make that like a part of my lifestyle. Like before I even ask God for something, like, I just want to come in with like worship on my lips, like, you know, being able to lift my hands and just say, you know, thank you, God, just thank you for everything you've done. You've been, you know, so good. Cause I just feel like that's like the way I want to enter his presence. He's been so good. Despite everything we have going on, it was a reminder just to worship, worship, you know, that's how we love on him. Um, you know, and, 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 and it's just such a, I don't know, it's just, it's, worship just changes things. Like I could go in worship one way and literally you come out another. I don't know if y'all ever seen this meme where it's like some cats and they're like, I don't know, it says they're walking to go pray or maybe they're going to go worship and then they come out of prayer or out of worship and they're like these big uh, ferocious lions coming out together. Like literally that's what worship does for us. When we come into there, you know, with just no expectations, I'm not here to worship so you can give me things. I'm literally here just to give you the glory that you deserve you come out of that room different and don't get together with a bunch of anointed other people like i promise you you'll be on this ground like it's just such a powerful move of god when you come um with pure worship in your hearts so th that passage stood out to me um and that's all i have was one through three did anybody else have anything that stood out to them The only thing I'll add is that um, my mentor always says that worship is revelation and then response, right? So like when we're going into worship, we have a revelation of like who God is. And when you really reflect on his goodness and you respond in that way, like you said, it is so it's empowering. Like I always tell people like you can't be God conscious and self-conscious at the same time, <laughs> you know? So I feel like people like standing around the church watching you worship, it's like, they're not really focused on God. Cause if you really were focused on his goodness, his greatness, you know, his might and all of these things about him, like you would not be wor able to worry about your problems. You wouldn't be able to, like it, everything just pales in comparison to him. So it's like, when you have that revelation of him and then you respond accordingly with like praise and thank you and like reverence, like it really does, you do come out like feeling like a big cat, <laughs> you know, like, like I can handle anything because like that's who's with me, like let's go. So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that was good. That was good. If she says worship is a revelation and then a response. It's a revelation and response. So it's so sometimes we think of worship just like in the context of like, singing like talking to god affirming you know whatever you worship looks like for you because all people are different in terms of how they worship um but it's also worship is when god says write the book and you write the book you know what i'm saying because you have because you're worshiping him you're right you're you're you know deciding that like he knows best and like he said something and his word is true and his word is what's best for you to do so then you you know you respond to it so there she just like tries to expand our 
the way that we look at worship. Like you can be like you, this is you doing, you, you're worshiping God through this girl game, right? Through this Bible study. Cause if he said, do it and you're doing it, you know what I mean? Like that is response. That's the response to the revelation that you had about God. So that's a form of worship. Obedience is a form of worship, I guess. Wow. I have never, I love that. I love that. I work in my Bible. So that's a, a great way to look at what worship actually is. Um, that's a good teaching. Thank you. Um, okay. I'm thinking house of the Lord. Okay. So then we can go on to 135. I had quite a bit. So, I mean, um, so Psalms 135, it's a hymn that praises God's power over nature and like things that they've done, that he's done throughout history. It also contains um, public condemnation of other gods and those who worship them. Um, first, I group two through six. Um, it's not long, it just sounds like a lot. And it says, you who minister in the house of the Lord, in the course of the house of our God, praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praise to his name, for that is pleasant. Um, and then I went to verse five, I'm sorry. I know that the Lord is great, that our Lord is greater than all gods. The Lord does whatever pleases him in the heavens and on the earth, in the seas and in their depths. Um, there was a lot of just like remembering like all the things that God has done throughout this chapter. Like the bulk of it is just like, and when he, you know, um, how he's shown up in different areas throughout history. Um, and I really like the fact in verse six, how it said, the Lord does whatever pleases him. I'm like, he's so powerful and he's so in control in the heavens and in the earth and in the sea. So like, there's nowhere you could go where you have to start worrying. Like, am I good? Will I be okay? Can I be provided for? Because he's in control of everything. Like, it just reminds you of how big and how great and powerful he really is. Um, and that took me into verse 13 and 14. I grouped them together and it just says, your name, Lord, endures forever. You're, you're renowned, Lord, through all generations. For the Lord will vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants. I love that it says that um, he'll be known throughout all generations um, because he's just that powerful. I don't know no other gods who, who have that, um, that much power and that much glory to be able to sustain themselves um, since the beginning of time, like our God. And I also love that it said the Lord will vindicate his people and he'll have compassion on us. We need compassion because we don't always get it right. But the fact that he will vindicate us, it's such a level of protection too, because we don't have to worry about fighting for ourselves. We don't have to worry about getting dirty, getting people back. Like he will go for provide whatever you need. He's gonna, he's gonna cover us. He's gonna forgive us. And because we're his servants, he's gonna always give compassion. So 13 and 14 for me was a reminder of who God really is. Sometimes we get so caught up in like, don't do this because God's, you know, like, like the God's like a tyrant, but he's really not like, he's literally the most compassionate, most wonderful God that there is. Um, and I love when I see little passages like that to remind me about the core of who, whom God is. Um, and I took that and I went into 15 through 18. And that was my last part. Um, and it started in 15 and I thought this was a warning and I was like, okay, I love that. Um, I'm doing a red. So the, 15, it says, the idols of the nations are silver and gold made by human hands. They have no mouths, but they have mouths, but cannot speak. Eyes, but cannot see. They have ears, but cannot hear. Nor is, nor is their breath in their mouths. And 18 took it all home. Those who make them will be like them. And so will all who trust in them. It was, okay. I mean... It's kind of self-explanatory, but the idols of the nations are silver and gold. Like if you trust in those things and, and you make those things and you think that, you know, because I have these things, I'm good, or, you know, I'm flossy, whatever. Um, if you trust in those things, like you literally have no value. They're, they're just like there. You literally have eyes, you ain't seeing nothing. You know, it just, it just gives you a good perspective, I feel like, about making anything an idol but also like materialistic stuff. Cause uh, I told you guys before, like I think about all these people who are like super rich and they go on to glory and stuff and they did know the Lord, like all their stuff is still here and they couldn't take nothing with them. And we don't even know where they ended up. Um, so I thought 15 through 18 was just a warning. 
of idols in general. I said a lot. Did anybody else have anything? <laughs> good morning, guys. This is Sandra. Good morning. Um, good morning. This was, good morning, beautiful. You look just like me. <laughs> <laughs> this I agree with you and I have to piggyback off of this this entire chapter was so much for me I don't know who the author of this is but let me just tell you for me I had to even share this with my children who um because they're of that age and I I just so much it, to me it, it literally jumped off the page saying you um, you pagan worshipers, you idol all of these things that can't and will do nothing for you. It, you and here is God who is a, a living God. I mean, this author says, I, I killed all the firstborns. I, I, I showed all my miracle signs and my wonders. I, I did this and that for the children of Israel. I did this. I, I um, you know, it even talks about how it um, brought down um, uh, was it the, the the thunder and the the lightning and the clouds and the rain and then you know and then you go back to the pagan worshipers where you have these idols they got eyes but they can't see they got a mouth they can't talk they don't breathe they don't do they are the living nothing they do absolutely nothing for you and why are you worshiping you know and these are just my words like mm -hmm. I it, it breaks my heart to hear so many people and that is what we are up against now there are so many people now and it blows my mind that do not they don't believe god they don't believe in jesus they don't believe in anything anymore they're mm -hmm. so quick to jump on these idols and jump on all of these feds and things where they um they're questioning the very god that that created the what do they call it the um the oh my gosh what is it they they worship the 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 world or the entity or, or or whatever and not even the god that made it like the, if universe. That even, the universe yeah they they universe. talk about the universe and and all of these things but oh my gosh like where do you think it came from how dare you worship the universe but you don't even worship the god that created like mm. that's just downright and I, I i don't and again you know we must not um forget that we're wrestling against principalities. You know, it's just not flesh and blood. There is a war on our children, point yep. blank, period. Yep. It, it is not a day, it is not a week or a month that goes by that I'm reading in just my local news here in Bolingbrook, where you have children that are, you know, committing suicide and giving up and, you know, they're battling depression and they're battling um, just, anxiety and 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 just oh put a bandage on it do um, medical marijuana do um riddling do this do this medicate it but no one is saying you know what it's okay to go to counseling you know this is something we as a a um this is something uh, from the older generation and nas different nationalities i won't point fingers will say you know don't do, all those people gonna lock you up they're gonna think you crazy there's nothing wrong with going to get help but this is what I tell my children seek ye first the kingdom if you seek God first you'll get all your understanding and then when you're going and you're going to talk to these specialists and things you will be able to understand you'll hear God God will help you to decipher and to understand and to in all what in all you're getting get understanding you will get Amen. understanding and all Amen. this getting that you're getting but they're out here getting the wrong information there is a war raged on our young on our children there is a I, it is breaking my heart day by day and and so many of us are fighting for our children. And I hear that is generational. The Holy Spirit has told me when I started going through my own personal situation and was breaking down and just like, why God, why? You know, and when God came to me, I was so just blown away that I meant that much to him that not only did he give me, um, he gave me clarification and understanding, but he also gave me a revelation. And when the Holy Spirit said to me, this is not just about you and your man. <laughs> this is not just about you and your husband. This is about our children. This is about our generational. This is about your children, your generational. And we are, I am a childcare provider of, for over 22 years. And that was my prayer when I chose I left banking to be with my asthmatic 
son and I've been doing this for that long. And my only regret is that I didn't do it sooner because I have been able to pray over lay hands, touch and pray over some of these children. God knows they need it. And I'm here Amen. to tell you, there is a war waged on our children. And Jana, I thank God for you. And I thank God for your courage. And I thank God for the fact that you even feel like, yeah, we, I, I don't know what I missed when I logged on later. I was trying to catch some of my service, but I apologize if I'm taking too long and I'm repeating this, but I thank God for your obedience because we have to, we, we, we have to, um, give God, we have to give back. We have to give our loved ones back. And that is so hard to do. And, and Paris and I, we can contest to so much loss, you know, and it's so much that comes with that. And especially when it's placed upon you to carry it and you have to do the final arrangements and things. We were thrown into that. And we did, we had each other. And I'm gonna tell you, the enemy will come against you and make you come against each other while you're doing that as well. Yeah. I don't know if you have other siblings, however, but I know that it is a, it is a testimony to be able to <laughs> walk through it and to give God back your loved one. But you stand on those shoulders, girl, and you gone on in there because when you become that Supreme Court judge, you gonna, your dad is gonna be right there you're going to be a Supreme Court. That's where you're going. That's where you're going to be. And you have made so many sacrifices till that is the only thing that is for you. And that's what's waiting for you. So you, you, you have those shoulders to stand upon and, and, and my God, you, it's happening. I, I see it as clear as I, I see the glory of God on you. And, and all of this is all working together for its good. The fact that you love the Lord and you're going to hold that seat in, 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 in the Supreme Court, that's what we need. We need yeah. prayer back in school. We need prayer back in the lives of these children. We need for these children to be, the Bible says, suffer not the children. That's it. That's all. I'm done. Amen. 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 Thank, you, Thank you so much. Um, Come on, Minnie. That was beautiful. That was a whole girl. I wasn't ready. <laughs> that was a whole word. Um, yeah. Okay. Wow. Well, I'm gonna let that sink in. Um. Okay. For discussion, I know we're like uh, like a little bit past on time. So if you guys feel like we go over too much, you know, we could wrap it up. Or you know, if you feel like you just need to go, that's fine too. Um. So like, I just have been hearing the word acceptance. Um. I've been hearing the word acceptance a lot. Um, I sent this brief little article um, to like Raquel and um, I wanted to talk about it a little bit because I feel like this season I've been going through a lot of growing pains. I'm connected to y'all. So I know somewhere y'all going through some growing pains because we're always like kind of on the same wavelength in different ways. Um, I'm gonna give you a, like a brief like like what the article talked about is so short, but I just kind of wanted to ask you guys some of your thoughts on it. And it said, what are you not accepting? Accepting who they weren't in your life isn't letting go. Accept who they couldn't be for you. Let your expectations of the outcome go. Forcing or helping them to change or become who they don't want to be is not how many is not how any meaningful connections grow or strengthen it only creates resentment and disappointment accepting who someone is not is peace it's surrendering to the truth it's surrendering to reality letting them be who they are even if that means they won't be in your life that's self love that's allowing life to take its course and be what it's meant to be. For me, what do you, are, are for you too? Oh. <laughs> okay, for me, this came on down my street and I've been thinking on it and I've been biting off of it. And the, far, the first part, when he says, what are you not accepting? If I'm honest, because for me, I literally, I have on no makeup, nothing. I'm just gonna come on in here real. Um, if I'm honest, this has been a season of growing for me. And I had to let go. I've had to let go of what my idea, what I thought a lot of, a lot of relationships in my life would look like. 
like sometimes you have these ideas like in your mind and when it don't play out like that you you just are like wait what like this, is this it for us sometimes you know and maybe it's not but my freedom came accepting the fact that the relationships weren't exactly what I expected them to be this is starting from biological parents on down like I mean I'm just I'm just being really honest um I've worked through it a lot in therapy, like not just like with my parents, but like, this is like, it's like for me this season, it, it came like a, like a wave. Like I was just like, okay, I'm trying to pull from here, trying to pull from here, it's not working. And I am coming out of the final stage and the Lord was like, I need you to accept it. Stop, get like, don't be angry about it. Accept exactly where you are, accept exactly how the, accept exactly how the relationships are, like, turned out to be, it's not what you expect to accept it and love them anyway. Um, it's hard and it's kind of uncomfortable. Um, so I just wanted to open it up for discussion. Is there any areas of your life where you feel like maybe you haven't accepted it? You know, the Lord is telling you that it's time and what does that look like? And how could you encourage someone else who might be in that transition of their life where it's time to start accepting like some of your truths? So yesterday was crazy. It was like the theme of yesterday was mental health. Like I just, my day literally started with the thing. It was like, okay, so this is how we're going to do this day. And so um, my, one of the last people that I had an interaction with, one of my last clients kind of closed out the mental health circle. And she, so she was going, she's going through something. She's at a crossroads in her life where she has to make a very tough decision. She is not happy, really. Um, she's basically a virgin. That's what she is. She's a virgin. She's 38 years old. And that's the crossroads she's at because she's in a religion where you have to be married. And if you choose not to go that right route, then you have to leave the religion. And so when I caught her, she was, she was like, okay, I have to, like, I'm not a speed waxer. She was like, okay, I know you're not a speed waxer, but I got this appointment I got to make. And I need to talk to this lady at this time. Do you think we'll be out of here? I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, whatever. So I don't even know what's happening. She's telling me about it, telling me about this. She's telling me about her, like, I've known she's a virgin, um, but she's coming to me doing whatever. So like getting a Brazilian wax, which I'm like, hmm. I don't know what you need this for, but whatever. So we're going through this. And then, so she's talking to me. And then that's when we come into the realization where she was like, she couldn't say all the words. She's like, I'm at a crossroads where I have to make a decision. I'm either going to stay in this religion or I'm coming out. And the problem I have is that, you know, she was just like, I don't know if I should do that because of the loneliness that comes with it. Because whoever's in your circle of people have to basically not be in your circle anymore. It's just you by yourself. And so what I told her, I was like, here's the thing. You can't be no half, no part-time gangster. You either a full gangster or you're not. And I was just explaining to her, it's like, you just got to decide what your decision is going to be. And you got to be prepared to live with it. It's either going to be good, it's going to be bad, or it's going to be both. And I was like, being a virgin is actually something quite beautiful. Like I have a child, so I would never regret some things that occurred with, for me. Uh, I did get married first and do that, but I wasn't like, I shouldn't have been, I didn't wear no white dress because I knew that wasn't what I should have been wearing at my wedding, I wore a pink dress. So I'm gonna just say that. Now, I told her, I said, on the other side of this, you know, it's not all roses being single. And if you're deciding to have sex and all those things, there's good and bad in every space and you gotta make a choice. And that's why I told her, I said, it comes down to what you're gonna do. You can't be scared about it. You can't back down from it. And if you make a decision and it turns out to be the wrong decision, then you know what, you gotta stand on it and be okay with it. And if, it, but you got to go with in your spirit. Now I did tell her, I'm not a pastor and I shouldn't be responsible for your soul. I'm a heathen and I shouldn't be guiding your efforts. You should be talking to somebody else. However, I did let her know, I stand on decisions I make. If I'm making it, I'm making it. And I face my stuff head on. So it was crazy that we're doing this because that's literally like the last conversation I had um, with people. Like I was just, it was a, it was a really long day. Like I just walked into like, okay, so I'm gonna start my day off and it's just gonna be crazy. And it's just gonna end crazy. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I okay. <laughs> it was parts of it, I, I'm with you. <laughs> parts of it, I'm with you. I feel like 
I don't know. I, I don't like religions that feel culty. I don't know if hers feel culty. That I get waiting is to marriage and all that. Like I think that's important. But so I got a part of it. The, I guess the thing of the religion is they don't want you tainting others, right? And not saying that you will. I get what that means. Like if I, for example, if I came in here and I was about you know selling drugs or whatever I'm into. I don't know if the Bible gang is the place for me to talk about selling my drugs, you know? So I see it in that space where if this is something you're imparting, they don't want you to come in with your thoughts. They want everyone to walk through it alone. Like even her decision, she literally is not allowed to tell anyone in her community about it because they, they will be forced, uh, forced to report her or something. And so it's like, they want it so that you, when you make this decision, it wasn't Paige in your ear. It wasn't Tina in your Amen. ear. It was your ear by Amen. yourself. And Amen. When you I made hear acceptance. Decision, I hear yes, a lot of acceptance. Yes, Jana. She is. And, then, and that's what I told her. I said that. And so when she was looking at it, like she was saying how lonely she felt. I said, I get how lonely it could be. But the way I can kind of look at it, while that's not the religion for me, they want to make sure that this is your decision. There's nobody else's decision but yours. So don't tell Tina and then Tina tell you whatever is where are you standing and how you feel about it? And you either going to make the decision or you're not. You got to stand on it. Same for the loneliness. It shouldn't be loneliness if you feel like you're okay. Like one thing people know about me, I'm going to say what I'm going to say. And if it hurts your feelings, if I know that I didn't come with it with that angle, I stand on it. And if you like, you don't like what I had to say and I hurt your feelings, my response would be, I'm sorry you took it that. I'm not sorry about what I said to you. I'm not even sorry about the tone I gave to you. Like 10 minutes, five minutes, maybe. Yeah. Uh, Amen. I'm not, sorry That's, about that. Okay. You know what, Paige? I hear, you know what, where this all to me connects is acceptance. When we get to a point of being frustrated, that shows us that we, we're, we're accepting of what it's, is being presented to us. It, um, to the article that Christina was speaking about and for your patient, it's acceptance. It's very frustrating when you have to come to the realization of what it is that's going on and you have to accept things for what they are. And, and once you get past the frustration and you see it for what God is presenting it as, um, I remember growing up with, um, and Paris again can contest to this, we had gotten to a point where we were just so frustrated with um, certain people in our life that were very close to us that were supposed to do and be certain things that we had expectations of them to do and be. But then when we had come together and say, you know what, this is what it is, this is what it's gonna be, we're gonna have to make the best out of it. And with that, I have to say, it allowed us to grow and to be exactly who and what we were supposed to be. Because I have to be honest with you, I'm so proud of who I am and I'm so proud of my sister and everything that she is and what we've come through. If we had not accepted that and if we had not came to those cruel, hurtful um, disappointments, we will not be who we are. And we were forced, we were literally pushed to be who we are and to say, yes, it was very disappointing. It was so hurtful, um, but having, I'm so glad I had my siblings to have that conversation with me because not only did it lead us to a place where we can grow, we grew, oh my gosh, did we grow? We, it, we knew that was our sign. You know what, you better, you better. We had to start over, we had to make some changes, you know, but um, we did not, we, we, we did not, we did not lose if that means anything. Yeah. We, we did not lose, we, we grew, we knew what we were up against and we knew who, who had our backs and who didn't, if that makes any sense, you know, you, you, you just have to grow. You have to accept what it is and you, you, you have to eat it. Like you say, you know, this is a plate that this is a plate you did not make, but you got to eat this stuff. But you know what? You get to choose to eat what you want and what you don't want. And you can throw away plant. You could throw yep. it on, on. You could do what you want to do with the rest. Okay. Did anybody, oh, that was good. That was really good. Do anybody else have like maybe one more or two more we could slide in for acceptance? Anything that you have learned to accept that like or anything in the article that stood out to you that brought anything to the forefront of your mind or made you feel some kind of way when you heard it? Did anybody else have anything? I'll share. Um, <laughs> so of course God is always have us in sync for some reason. So I play a space game on my phone, right? And when you play the space game, you sit down as partners space and you sit down and 
you can see like what level your partner is on and what their win percentage is, right? Like, so like when, how long they've been playing the game will indicate like what level they're on. So I typically, if I sit down and somebody sits across from me and they're gonna be my partner, if they're not like at least at a level 50 and they don't even have like a level, like 50% wins, then I won't play with them. So I was on my game about a week ago and then, um, you know, I was, I kept exiting because I kept getting whack partners, right? Like they weren't, they didn't win enough and they didn't have enough, you know, they weren't on a high enough level. And Allura said, if you're this choosy with who you play spades with, shouldn't you also do that in your real life relationships? And I was like, what? <laughs> and what he said, what he was highlighting to me was that like, sometimes I have a tendency, whether it's in close friendships or like relationships to like make excuses for people you know like so like why would you choose somebody that's not even on your level like why would you choose to like be trying to walk closely with somebody that's not on your level that don't have the same like spiritually mentally emotionally whatever you know criteria you use it because I tend to like you know I want to see the best in people I think like you know I'm inspirational so if you're around me you're gonna want to get better anyway so even if you're still struggling with a few things like you know, I can help you out of that. And he's like, no, you just got to accept what level people are on. And then you make a decision, right, on how closely you can walk with that person. Like, do you want to really partner with somebody that you're so, because you're going to end up carrying the team, right? You're going to end up like, if I'm the person that has a strength in this area, and you've got a, like a lot, a lot of weakness in this area, then I'm going to end up carrying us. So I just thought, and then that in combination with that picture you sent me, which really blessed my life, the, the, the thing that fell out your, your grandmother's Bible or book or something. And it was like, you just can't look at potential. You know, you can't fall in love with potential. Like potential can't hold you at night, okay? Potential can't, you know, you got to really just accept things as they are, not how you want them to be. So yeah, I've been dealing with the acceptance thing. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if y'all even saw that, like in a, in a group chat, I was like, what in the world? Um, I was over my grandmother's and I opened up a book and it fell out on the table and I was like, Jesus, is this you? And, um, it was an old paper. I said, where did this come from? She said, that's old. I've been had that. And it said, you can't let one thing blind you from the truth. Look at things as they are, not what you wish things to be. I said, woman, <laughs> this blessed this. Let me take a picture of that. She said, like, what you would take for this old thing for? But I was like, this is, this is a gem. It's a gem. And acceptance is not easy. It, it, it's just, but it's, it's so necessary. And the fact that accepting what something was not or, or whatever, like the fact that you can have peace in what it wasn't, I never looked at it like that. I always just look at it. I got to make it work. We got to be like this, you know? It's like, it wasn't what I thought it would be. But that's okay, because there's peace in that, too. I was like, this is a great article, but yeah. Okay, if y'all want to do one more, we can do one more. If not, then we can, um, we're going to pray out for, for Jonna today. Okay. Can, I just, can I just introduce myself really quick, Christina? Girl, Larissa, please come on here. Bless us. Right. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Larissa. Um, I went to college with Christina. Um, I just want to thank you all for allowing me to hop on. I'm looking forward to continuing with you guys. Um, I'm in a space of restoration. Um, I don't know if you've ever like just got tired of yourself. <laughs> like you just need to move your own self out the way. And so I'm in that space of just connecting with God because I've been doing it my way. And he's like, it's not working, is it? And I'm like, no. <laughs> so he's like, we'll do it my way. So um, I'm just in a place of restoration and I just ask for your prayers and I thank you in advance. Yes. And Jana, it's so nice to see you and I'm praying for you and your family. And it was nice to just fellowship with you ladies. Um, and I just pray that you all have a blessed week. Oh, thank you, you so too. Thank you for coming and thank you for sharing that. And, and believe me, like you, look, you just got connected with us, but like we're all here with the restoration and you know, rebuilding some things and, and, and seeing it from God's perspective instead of our perspective. So I appreciate you, appreciate you joining. And I love the fact that we can like support each other and this is love and whatever you need, whatever you need to pray for, you know, right in that group, me, we got you, you know? So thank you for, for everything. Um, thank you. And, and I really felt like today was a little different, but I really wanted the Holy Spirit to take over. Um, John has been on my heart a lot. Um, 
and she just gives so much to this group. So I just kind of like want to pray. Like if you do pray in the spirit, you know, you can pray in the spirit and like, I'll start off praying. And like, if anybody else has to go, like, you know, feel free to go. But like, I just, whatever, whatever the Holy Spirit leads you to say or whatever, um, you know, to speak over her, speak into her, like, just, just let God release us from like our own thoughts from out of our own mind. And if, if the Lord, if you feel led to speak, just speak. And we'll just like, let him do what he does. Um, thank you, God. Whew. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Yeah, I some good old show you. Thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I thank you for this time together, God. Jesus. I thank you for the restoration that it, it that is being. Um, I thank you for the restoration that is coming over each and every one of us, Father God. I thank you for the rebuilding of our lives, Lord, that you are going to be so intimately intertwined into every fiber of our next move that we make and the way that um, our thoughts are structured and that you are going to be showing your ways like never before, Lord Father God. I thank you for this group of women, God. I thank you that this will be God. I thank you that this will be big. I thank you that people who don't know you will come to you, God. Lord, allow us to be bold. Allow us to not stay away when we fall off. Allow us to not have too much shame when we don't get it right, when we feel like we got to stay out of your presence. That's not who you are. Your arms are always open to us. You may not agree with everything that we do, but we know that you are a God of grace. We know that you are a God of love. We know that you've given us strength when we, we couldn't stand on our own two feet. I know that you brought me, Jana. I know that you, your, your concern for her is deep and it is great. I thank you for Jana, God. Yes, Father. I thank you for the gifting that you've put in her. I thank you for the release and her obedience to you, God. I thank you for her boldness. I thank you for her sensitivity to the spirit. I thank you for allowing me to be connected with her, God. Your love for her is undeniable. I know that you care for every area that feels a little bit uncertain. I know that you're about to move in her life in a mighty way. I thank you that everywhere she thought, any place in her mind where there was a concern, I know that you have her car for her already paid in full, God. I thank you that you have peace with her that, that, that we, we can't even understand, that we're sitting here trying to even understand how is she here today? How is this happening? Because you love her so greatly, God. I thank you for to the depths of her heart, God, where, where she feels fear, where she feels um, disappointed, where she feels sad in God, that she'll have an overflow of joy, God, an overflow of peace, Lord Father, God, an overflow of strength, God. I even thank you for her pain, God. I thank you for her pain because you keep saying catapult, catapult, that you had to allow the pain to sit in so that she can be exactly who you needed her to be because she's going to mm, be, yeah. as, a, as the Lord said, you're going to be a slingshot, that you will not mm. be able to be stopped. So sit in this pain and, and while you're even in your pain and as we stand with you in your pain, thank God, begin to thank him because he is going to touch, you are going to touch nations, Lord Father God. It's gonna, he's going to do it through you, Lord Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that he had to allow you to go through all these seasons of testing and seasons of purifying and seasons of just being, going through the going through the fire, but but coming out without nothing even on you. And there's no smoke on you. You, you won't even be recognizable where God is taking you. I thank you that her mind is already equipped, God. I thank you that her spirit is already equipped. I thank you that where her heart is broken, that you've already started sewing up areas where it needed to be mended. I thank you for her strength, God, that we can't, we, we can't even understand as we sit and watch her today, God. We know that it's nobody but you, God. I thank you for this woman of God, and I thank you for, for everything mighty that you're about to do in her life, God. And we just stand around her in a circle, Lord Father God, and, and, and we just know that we just want you to know that you are loved, that you are supported, that, that God is going to get you through every area that concerns you, because he has a plan of a, a perfect plan, a perfect plan of peace for your life. 
I thank you for her strength. I thank you for her glory, Lord Father God, that is that is going to speak to so many people who are lost, Lord Father God. And she's going to give so much hope to so many people who've been broken, who've been uncertain, who've been heartbroken, that she is going to uplift, that she is going to encourage. I thank you, God, that you're going to send all the right people and that we're going to we're going to remove all distractions, God, because in this season, you like like the, the purifica purification, the purification. So even when she feels lonely because she can't be connected to certain people at the moment, that you give her peace even in that because you're about to get so much glory out of this woman. Amen. Thank you, God. If anybody else feels led to pray, like please just, just pray. Father God, we thank you for your strength, Lord God. Father God, we thank you for just being who you are, Father God. When we think about you, we know that your name is matchless, Lord God. Who can stand against the mighty name of Jesus? Father God, we thank you right now, Father God, for just, just all that you are in our lives, Lord God. Father God, we thank you that we know that it's someone that we can come to and pull on when we are weak, Lord God. When we are struggling, Lord God, you are there, Lord. Father God, when we left, you never left us, Lord God. So, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, Father God, for peace that we will never understand, Lord God. Father God, we thank you that your ways are perfect. Father God, we thank you that your will is perfect, Father God. So whatever it is that you take us through, Father God, we surrender. In the mighty name of Jesus, we surrender to your will, to your way, to your plan, whatever it is, Father God, whatever we got to go through, Father God, we surrender right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, have your way in Jonathan's life, Lord God. Have your way, Father God, because she got sisters that's going to lift her up. Father God, we thank you that you've given us the strength. So when Jonna has absolutely nothing to pull from, we're praying for her. Father God, we thank you right now for her boldness, Lord God, her black and white spirit, Lord God. Father God, it's either you or it's nothing. Father God, we thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, who can stand against you? Father God, when they worship the universe and forget the creator, who can stand against you? Father God, you said that at the name of Jesus, hallelujah every knee will bow every tongue will confess that you are lord so we thank you right now for being almighty father god for being who you are lord jesus thank you hallelujah hallelujah thank you lord god have your way in this place lord jesus have your way hallelujah hallelujah thank you lord jesus Father, I thank you for um, the intentionality, dear Lord, that you've developed through the process of this group, Father God. I've said this before, dear Lord, but because the group was birthed in the way that it was grouped and the timing that it was group, um, um, put together, dear God, you blessed us to become interconnected in a way through our seasons, um, through our valleys. And so I thank you, Father God, dear Lord, for how you've allowed us to be interconnected and to be able to um, be here to pour out for our sister. Um, Father God, to be um, our sister's keeper in this way, dear Lord, to truly have a heart for her, Father God, in these circumstances so that we can even bear the burden, dear Lord, as she continues to walk in gracefulness. Father, I thank you, dear Lord, for how you've allowed her to pour out through us, Father God, so that we can see your fruits, dear Lord, um, so that we are able to pour into <laughs> And so, Father, I just pray and I just ask you, Father God, dear Lord, your word says that you are close to the brokenhearted. Dear Father God, you rescue their spirits from being crushed. And so I thank you, Lord, that you um, <clears throat> continue to keep her and continue to bless her spirits, dear Lord, um, from not being crushed. I pray for the ways and the orders and the steps that are to follow, Father God, and the resolution of his estate um, and the laying to rest of her father, father dear Lord, um, and the, in the communion of her family, dear Father God. I pray for peace. I pray for peace to spread like wild wildflowers through her family, um, for it to spread like wildflowers through the community, through all that he touched, dear Father, for it to be so peaceful and so abundant that wherever she steps, she has favor, wherever she has to organize or bring together or inform of the circumstance that she has favor and that she has an outpouring of grace and support. Dear Father God, she is not met in any way with conflict. And I just ask you, Father God, to send your heavenly angels, Father God, to send Michael, dear Lord, just to defend her against any conflict, any circumstance, Father God, and to give her instant resolution 
to discern through those matters, Father God, and give her instant resolution, Father God, and to grant her peace, dear Lord. I mean, just sincere peace that truly is supernatural, that truly surpasses all understanding, dear Father God. Um, sincere peace, dear Lord, that she herself doesn't even know how she has, that even as she's speaking, even as she's dwelling, that she just looks around and it's like, this is amazing that I'm unscathed. Um, peace to not even see any foolishness or nonsense, dear Lord, but that in the in the background, you are working it through and you are working it over, Father God, for that favor to continue to overflow. And I thank you, dear Lord, for the time that you put on her heart to have moved her father in when she did, dear Lord, so that she could have that time to care for him. She could have that time to be with him, dear Lord, and that you've always blessed her heart to be a daddy's girl. Ha, hallelujah, Jesus. To be a daddy's girl, not only of her heavenly father, Father God, but of her earthly father as well, dear Lord. Um, and so, Father, I just continue to pray, Father, for everything that is being put together for the organization of it all. I pray that it's not overwhelming, dear Lord, um, but that is just enough, dear Father God, that it's just enough and that it comes together just so easily for her. Father. Um, and I just ask you, Father God, for the things that you are continuing to pour out for her. Um, dear Lord, I keep hearing obedience, Father God, even as Ty was praying, dear Lord, tears just welled up in my eyes. And so I just say unto all of us, there's a season of obedience for us. Um, there's a season of obedience for us for, for a reason. There's a reason that we're interconnected right now. And it's really intentional that we have to be obedient in every way. <clears throat> whether it be something as simple as turn around and go back home and get this or don't say this or just be still or don't react or follow this but don't do that and I say this from a place of one that is struggling with um the obedience that I've been called to but there's a reason for us to be obedient right now in the season his ways are perfect his ways are higher his ways are greater so we have to only just follow what we know and so if there's anything that you're struggling with in obedience honestly you have to just remain where he wants you in that obedience you have to trust in that obedience you have to be disciplined in that obedience it's a reason for that it's a strengthening for that and I thank you, dear Father God, um, because we just learned recently that we were meant to be obedient, that we were going through this season um, of obedience and struggling with it. And so I thank you, dear Lord, that it came out even before we had to really be intentional in our connection, Father God, and pour out so that it's confirmation now as we continue to proceed. And I just pray, Father God, that you make our ways perfect. Father God, that you grant us grace, dear Lord, to walk those, those valleys, Father God, that you comfort us and you strengthen us through that, Father God, dear Lord, and that you bless us to not have a spirit of fear as we walk through that valley, dear Lord, but a spirit of powerfulness, Father God, a spirit of loving and understanding for others, Father God, and a sound mind in our discernment as we walk through that, dear Lord, and as for myself as well, dear Lord, in Jesus' name I pray. Resurgence. I keep hearing resurgence, God. Let this be a year of resurgence, not vengeance, not depression, not negative connotations. Let it be a turnaround, Father God. I pray that you turn it all around. Any miss opportunity, any negative perception, let it turn around, Father God. I hear resurgence, Father God. This is a resurgence, Father God. Don't let this be binding. Don't let this be chains. Don't let this be, let this be the gate to open up, Father God. I just keep hearing that resurgence, Father God. In your name I pray, amen. Father God, I come to you, Father God, humble, Father God, thanking you, Father God, for always standing in the gap for us, Father God. Oh God, I pray for the strength of Goliath, Father God. I pray that you just be the, 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 the valley walker for her, Father God. Oh Father God, we trust you when we can't trace you, Father God. And in the day, Father God, I just want to thank you for always being there and going ahead of us and just being our eyes when we can't see and being the voice when we can't speak. Father God, on today, we just want to just thank you for just being in our life, just being the person that we can come to, just allowing us to have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Father God. Oh, Father God, you are so much to us than we can even imagine, Father God. But on today, Father God, I just want to thank you for the obedience in her father God, the strength in her father God, her belief in you father God, the belief that she has that is so strong that when she speaks we all somber to her father God father God to have someone in your life and have someone in your spirit to lead father God on your behalf father God I just ask father God in you today father God that you heal and give her peace father God and that you do for her that you did for myself and my sister father God and that's that give her all the 
understanding, Father God, and all the strength that she has to stand and fight, Father God, throughout this life, throughout her supreme, Father God. You just dwell with her as she's dwell with you. And Jonah, you continue to trust him when you can't trace him and everything is going to be all right in God's name and in the blood of Jesus. I pray for you. Amen. Sympathy is to have a sadness for, and empathy is to have a sadness with. So, Father God, I just ask that you allow uh, Jonna to fill our empathy, that we are there with her. We are sad with her, and we, we um, I just ask that you allow her to just reach out when she's in need. We're here to pray for her and be for her in her time of struggle. And for every person on this call and in this group that um, they feel our empathy when they are going through something. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, amen. Father God, fall fresh on each and every one of your, your daughters of Christ, Lord. We, ask, we are asking for a restore and restoration. And Lord, we thank you for sustaining mentally, physically, emotionally as we go from day to day. Lord, we are continuously lifting up Jenna and her family, for this is a great loss. We, we ask that God, you allow God, Jenna, to carry you as you journey through this great loss. It is definitely a journey, and this is definitely going to be a great season. This is the beginning of a great season. Again, the great sacrifices that have been rendered, and you have so diligently and, and, and so gracefully accepted God. You've accepted God's decision. Acceptance is everything. You, you, you've humbled yourself. And, 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 and I ask that you continue to humble yourself and be still and allow God to tell you which way to go and what to do. You are a leader. You are definitely a leader. You have a strong mind, a strong relationship with Christ. And this is a time for you. You, you've, you've done the work. You, you gave your, your dad, you gave your dad his flowers while he was alive, honey. And, and what you gave to him was, was better than in an, any second, any extra moment, second of hour of life, what you gave to your daddy while he was here. And I'm so here to tell you that God is pleased. God is pleased when, when, the, when the Holy Spirit showed up to your door sick and needed somewhere to live, to rest, to have peace so that he can transition. That's what you did. And you did that not just for your earthly father. But like Ty said, you, you, you did it for the love of your heavenly father. And I just speak just peace on all of us, over all of you, all of us. This is not, I, I hear time, 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 time. We, God is the ruler. He's control of time. He is control of time. We are not starting over from scratch, but this season represents a starting over. We're starting anew. It's, it's not from scratch, though. We have a foundation that we're building on. And as long as we keep our hand in God's hand, he will sustain us and he will. He will grow us. Christina, you have a journey. You have such an amazing, an amazing platform that, that's going to bring in help a lot of young women and a lot of people. And, and Jana, you are so anointed and you have the ability to so peacefully help an individual catapult to what it is that God would have them to be. And Kina, oh my God, just, you just speak volume when you allow God to fill you. You have so much in you that you just got to just let it go. You just got to let it rip. Just like you wanted to rip at those boys. You, you, you have the authority to, to approach a situation and do what thus said the Lord. And Larissa, I'm so here to tell you, restoration and restore you are on your way it you're going to do it God's way it's going to it's going to be a great journey you're going to have so much growth and so much wisdom so much knowledge and understanding you you you're 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 already there you you are you're already there you just have to do it God's way we get so busy with doing it our way and and we get so caught up into these these seeds and these this this pain we have to I, I heard this from Sarah Jakes and I, I hope I don't kill it but I, I think she says turn your sorrow into seed and allow it to grow for the grace and allow it to grow for God 
not for for you, not for for whatever you've been through. It, it you, you for God and 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 the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is real. Paris, the Holy Spirit is real and he talks to you. Girl, he is like a train going 190 miles an hour, Paris. And the Holy Spirit sit and kick it with you every day, all day, and you hear him. It is not a a it is not a random thought in your head. It is the Holy Spirit. And he is speaking to you. And he wants to cuddle you and hold you. And he wants to give you any and all that you are asking for. You I've got to slow down, sister. You, you got to slow down because you're doing, you, 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 you just taking everything. You're pulling everything in your bosom and you're pulling it and you're holding it close to you and you're doing it. But people and every, you get, people got to know from the, the, the head to the tail, they have to find and see God as well. You, you could just help them. You could show them the light. And, and, and Ty, I, I thank God for your growth. Oh my God, because this blessing that God, this seed that God has, has, has placed within you. It's not a sacrifice, Ty. It is not a sacrifice. This is definitely a blessing. And this is definitely a light. This is a light that is not just going to shine through you and bring and show you. It's going to show and it's going to help so many, so many lives, so many young ladies, so many lives, so many of our children, so many of our young people. Your voice, my God, your voice makes the mountains tremble. And when you say the word you, it is so, oh my God, it, de it detoxes, it cleanses and it detoxes for the, the Lord. I could feel the Holy Spirit and you just keep pressing on. You keep pressing on because you have a light in you that is so ready to shine, but you are in control of the switch. You have to allow God. We, you got to place everything else tied that is bugging you and bothering you and what you think you're not. Throw it at the foot of the cross. Girl, don't lay it there. Throw it there. You throw it down and you turn around and you leave it. You give it to God and you leave it there because something is hindering you because you got a light so bright in you. You got to let it shine. You have, And Paige, oh my God, you are placed exactly where you need to be with the work that you do, the work that you do, the lives that you are saving and you are bringing into Christ. You, my dear, you are so transparent and that's exactly what, is needed. You're giving so much strength and you're giving so much, so much clarity. You're in, and you're, and you're so careful to minister with care and you're removing yourself. Always remember to remove yourself and always just allow God to take over, allow him to fall fresh on you and to work through you and allow him to give you exactly what to say, because it is so needed. And God is so pleased and you can, and, 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 you will help so many more and so many were sore for that. And so will you. God is so pleased with our platform and he just only wants us to continue in the mighty name of Jesus and put him first and allow individuals to see this is, this is not a, a, a this is not a game. This is, we are fighting for our souls. There is a war going on. There is a war going on and the, we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against principalities. And there's so much that are going, that's going to, to root. This is a, this is the root and we are going to soar together and in so many different ways in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Um, Joanna, I know <clears throat> this is going to be a hard time for you, but. As you know, we're going to always lift you in prayer and be there for you. Um, thank you for always being there for us and just being a voice and a light and being obedient to God's spirit. Um, right now, I want to be obedient and I keep hearing, uh, I keep hearing he's home. Amen. And so I know right now. Amen. It, amen. It hurts. But Amen. Although Amen. you lost him in the flesh, he's he's gained in heaven. Amen. Amen. And I keep seeing um a glass pitcher <laughs> with like sparkles <laughs> like being poured out on you. So I believe there is blessings and just peace and love just being poured out, out on you right now. And for this next season in your life, there's going to be so much overflow. Yes. And I'm just so grateful for you. And Amen. I pray you continue with just 
um, seeking God and always reach out to us when you need us. Thank you. Um, woo. Thank y'all. Seriously, thank you. Um, Raquel, I appreciate your obedience. I know <laughs> how hard it is for you sometimes to say what you hear, but I'm so, so pleased with your growth, just your prophetic courage. Um, and that's just something I've been praying about and um, just making sure that my that he he made it, you know, with um that then my father went home and to be with the Lord. And so um I just appreciate that confirmation. My daughter my father was a really big baseball fan and my daughter said that she had a dream the night after he died that she saw him like at a baseball game and he was like doing like this, like, Yeah, I'm here, I made it, you know, and so that just made me lose it. And you what you just said just made me lose it because like that's my ultimate concern. Like I can re- the what gives me rest is like I walked him through the sinner's prayer like a couple times like once while he was in my house once while he was in the hospital you know I knew he had you know he had his bible and I would do my prayer videos and stuff he'd always comment and watch my videos and say amen and thank you Jesus and stuff like that but you know you just want to know um Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like that they're gonna make it home and so yeah I feel I I feel good now I can run (laughs) I can run around this place right now because like Mm -hmm there's nothing to be sad about. I mean, you know, I can reflect on my human loss and, you know, I don't get to talk to him, you know, things like that from my own human experience. But if my father is with Jesus, I'm going to see him again, number one. And, you know, he's definitely in a better place. You know, he's been a lot of pain and he's not anymore. So um, thank you all. Larissa, I'm going to give you, I have a word bubbling up for you in my spirit, but God told me to just receive today. So I'm trying to be obedient, but I do want to just say this. And then it's less like a precursor. I see you, um, you're a preacher and I see you very clearly at a, um, like, uh, what do you call it? The podium, like, um, in front of people, like very slowly, like turning the pages of your Bible, finding your scripture, getting ready to like um dissect the the word of God and so there's a a scripture that says um study that study to show thyself approved a workman that need not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth so I feel like in this season God is calling you to rightly divide the word of truth like he wants to write his word in your heart and he wants to you know give you such a strong foundation in him but he won't just know the book you're going to know the author um so that you can share that with people because I can't get around the word. I just kept saying all while you were talking that you know I do I looked at your picture I just said like she's a preacher you know and I don't know if you know that but um God is going to use you this this very del- I just see like you're just like a very deliberate you know nature um and so the submission I said I was only gonna give a little bit but the submission Um, has to precede the platforming right so um, he's calling you to submit submit to this season it's not going to be comfortable I'm not going to even tell you that because when you submit yourself to the word trials will come attacks will come you know but it's going to be so worth it Um, and then so the way that you can encourage yourself to endure it is to think about all the souls on the other side of your submission you know like all the people that will be helped and strengthen like I really feel like you're called for the equipping of the ministry like read the book of Ephesians and you get a chance um, because we're called to equip the saints right and so I feel like your calling is to equip the saints through the teaching of and dissecting of God's word but to do that you first have to be the first partaker amen <laughs> so so thank, bless you thank you Jenna for giving to me um that just shows your overflow that even in this season that you're going through, that you are just just brimming over with God's goodness that you're still able to give to me. So I appreciate that so much. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I love y'all. I love y'all. I need y'all. Yes. Oh, really quickly, Larissa, I'm sorry, really quickly. I know you're so new to the group, but just so you know, like we're, um, it's an intentionality for us to really be able to help each other remain accountable. So don't have any hesitation 
to post in the group or say anything so that we can lift you up because mm. even when she said submission I was like oh my gosh we have to lift her up for that like that was the first thing that dropped in my spirit so anything that you struggle with in that process of submission don't hesitate to like you know put it at our feet with you so that we can put it at his feet for you thank you I appreciate that I I do struggle with just being vulnerable um so I appreciate I appreciate that um, one thing before I leave, Jonah, I wanted to tell, share with you the peace in the valley when all things were said and done. Like after we went through and came out with the Holy Ghost on us, the peace and the freedom that you have to move around, your mobility would become, it seems like somehow, some way you take on some strength from the person you lost, especially if it's a sibling or a parent. You, God gives you something. He restores you with something. And it's, I've always been able to come out the storm victorious and to leap forward in life. And I just wanted to share that with you. I won't, I, I, I won't say look out for it because God already, he's already dwelling and you already see that. But I just wanted to share with you the peace that I've always had after the storm. Like everything is beautiful after the storm. Amen. Okay. If there was ever a way to sum up <laughs> everything, Paris, those words were so beautiful. And Jonna, we know that like you're literally gonna live in like the peace after the storm. Like it's already on you. It's already started. It's, it's it's so apparent. And I'm so grateful for today. And just um, today was so different. We normally never go this long. This was the Holy Spirit took over today. This was definitely none of us. So I'm just so grateful um, that He loves you and loves all of us the way that He does, and that we have each other. Um, in a group, me if y'all have anything else, um, or if you all want to like you know donate to. Uh, whatever you know her uh zeal and anything if you want to donate to any of the expenses like whatever we can do to help give us some jobs delegate you know we're here we got you and um i love you guys and we'll just meet again on sunday take care everyone i love you guys bye have a good bye. Day. Okay, bye bye, bye.